Well, there are 11 new confirmed cases of COVID-19 across Montana. Yellowstone and Missoula counties adding the most with three each. Gallatin County, which added two, still has the most cases with a total of 142. As of midnight, 218 people have recovered and 21 people were hospitalized. The death toll remains at seven. Well, Montana's tourism industry facing tremendous uncertainty headed into the key travel season. While scores of Montana businesses are wrestling with the unknowns caused by the coronavirus pandemic, the uncertainties are especially acute for tourism. This is the time of year that Montana's resorts, outfitters, and others are usually filling up the calendar for not only the spring, but the summer and even the fall. Yet a new survey from the University of Montana's Institute for Tourism and Recreation Research shows more than 80% of those businesses were experiencing cancellations and well over 60% had zero bookings for April and May. Half had no bookings in June and a quarter no bookings in July or beyond. 66% have already laid off staff and 3% of the businesses had already shut their doors for good. Well, it's time now to check in on the weather scene with Ed McIntosh. Good afternoon, Ed. Hi, Janelle. We've had snow through the morning yes. hours through portions of the region, but we really didn't get the heavy stuff. Take a look nationally today where you see those blue and pink shaded regions right through southern uh, Wyoming, Colorado, Nebraska, all the way over into Iowa. That's the area where we could see snow all the way over towards even Chicago, and this is where it's setting up right now. So some of those areas is fairly heavy. Zoom down towards Denver, and we always take a look at the air quality building there. They got a great webcam. You can't see the skyline off into the distance. Normally you'd be able to see right into downtown, but not much to see there. Cheyenne, here's how the snow looks through Wyoming. Also a lot of snow right on through Nebraska. It will throw in Kansas in there really quick with some rain showers for us. We're looking at warming, but when? We'll tell you in a few minutes. All right, thanks so much, Ed. Well, a group seeking to put marijuana legalization on Montana's November ballot is now suing the state. New Approach contends it should be able to collect signatures electronically during the coronavirus emergency. Earlier this year, New Approach submitted a pair of measures aimed at legalizing marijuana in Montana. Initiative 190 would set up a recreational marijuana system with a 20% tax on sales and it must receive 25,000 signatures from registered voters here in Montana. Constitutional Amendment 118 would allow the state to set the minimum buying age at 21 and must receive 50,000 signatures. New Approach is also asking that the deadline for collecting signatures be moved back from June 19th to August 3rd. Well, if you're receiving a stimulus check in the mail, beware. Scammers are sending fake IRS documents to your mailbox. It's happening in Great Falls, and authorities there say keep yourself safe and informed. If you get something in the mail, make sure you verify it online. If it doesn't look right, do not respond until you talk with someone who can help you verify it. And another reminder, the IRS will not be giving you a personal call. All of its communication is done through the mail. Online platforms like Facebook and Google are stepping up efforts to stop the spread of misinformation. Potentially dangerous false claims about the coronavirus have been circulating social media worldwide. Now, many tech companies had already issued new guidelines and warnings to users who posted incorrect remedies or harmful conspiracy theories. Health authorities pushing for efforts like this before the coronavirus say platforms seem to be working faster than ever to stop misinformation. With CDC guidance to disinfect items and surfaces you come in contact with, it might be time to give your home or business a deep clean. Now, there are services all across the state to help you get that done. MTN's Megan Mannering brings us an example from Missoula. Clean and disinfect. Instructions you're hearing over and over as we navigate this pandemic. So while SurfPro Missoula may be known for their work on fire and water mitigation, right now they're prepared to keep your home virus free. I spend a lot of time with our guys about the importance of what products you use, how you clean, the importance of dwell time. So once you apply a disinfectant to a surface, making sure that it stays in contact with that surface. And also our guys are using engineering controls in houses, so they're making sure that they're cleaning in a, a manner that is letting them work back towards the doors so we're not recontaminating or cross-contaminating other areas of the structure as we clean. 
As one of the essential businesses remaining open at this time, ServPro can clean and disinfect your home or business with hospital-grade disinfectants. Operations manager Kevin Weiderman says they're also following protocol set forth by the CDC. The CDC has a protocol out for um, double gloves and taping wrists of Tyvek suits, um, specific types of masks and respirator filters. On a day-to-day -day basis, Weiderman recommends general cleaning. That's using warm soap and water to wipe down those high contact areas like doorknobs and countertops. But if you want to use a disinfectant, he says some are better than others. If they want to use a disinfectant, the EPA has what's called an end list, um, which is online. You can see all of the EPA approved uh, products that are approved for what they call emerging viral pathogens. Um, and a lot of those products are available in grocery stores. In Missoula, Megan Mannering, MTN News. Thanks, Megan. And again, there are professional cleaning and restoration services all across Montana in each of the largest communities. Well, the government is closing in on its lending limit for small businesses. As of Tuesday, the Paycheck Protection Program loaned $311 billion in relief money. The stimulus package stops at $349 billion. The Trump administration has asked Congress for another $250 billion for the program, but the head of the Small Business Administration says more than that will be needed. Now, the SBA has processed more than 14 years' worth of loans in less than 14 days. Well, up in Flathead County, fire investigators are now looking into a house fire in Evergreen, Montana. Evergreen Fire Marshal Ben Covington says, according to witness statements, it is possible someone may have started a house fire on purpose. Crews were dispatched to the structure around 2.20 a.m. on Monday morning. The home was heavily damaged and was a total loss. Covington says investigations like this could take months due to various witness interviews and evidence. Well, we have more ahead on your new news a bit later in the show. How one Helena mom did not let social distancing stop her from throwing her daughter the best 15th birthday possible. The time now is 1207, but first, Ed's up next with your statewide weather forecast. with meteorologist Ed McIntosh. Welcome back to the new news. Temperatures, we got a few 40s starting to pop up now from Missoula up towards Kalispell at the airport north of town. And looking at temperatures into the 20s and 30s pretty much everywhere else. After a cold start this morning, some teens and 20s, it's been hard to recover as we start getting into the afternoon. Thanks to some clouds, some cold air coming down from the north, and a bit of snow through portions of the region really didn't help out too much either. As we look right along the Montana-Wyoming line, still some light snow showers there, bigger impacts into the mountain foothills the Red Lodge foothills of south central Montana, and then also as we follow a little more into I 90 down around into the Bighorn Mountains. Now, as we mentioned at the top of the newscast, the snow is a much bigger deal once we get south of Casper around Cheyenne, Denver, and then pushing off through the central plains all the way to the Great Lakes states today. But with the somewhat clearing sky, we've still got cold air that's coming into play. It's coming under that northwesterly flow and could allow for a few snow showers that linger through the afternoon and early evening before they start to fade out. Temperatures will slip down into the teens to 20s for the overnight lows tonight, generally with a mostly clear sky across most of Montana, a few clouds through northern Wyoming. Warmer air starts to slide in tomorrow. In fact, we could see a pretty substantial warm up, but notice the blue arrows coming in play. That's winds coming down the east slopes of the Rockies that will aid in the warm up through eastern Montana. But as this cold front sinks across from Canada, it's going to bring in another round of at least somewhat colder air. Not as chilly as today, but it does bring clouds and enough moisture to trip off some showers. Now, most of the showers want to follow pretty much right along the cold front. Areas of rain showers, a few mountain snow showers or a rain snow mix, depending on the timing of it as it approaches through the area on Saturday. Temperatures will drive down slightly for most of the region, but the rebound comes as early as Sunday. It's a pretty typical spring pattern where we see a lot of ups and downs in the temperatures along with the chance of showers. So while we're looking at a lot of 30s and 40s on the map for the daytime highs, generally the showers start to clear out during the afternoon. That leaves us partly to mostly clear overnight tonight. Temperatures will be mainly in the teens and 20s first thing tomorrow morning. We'll be looking at a fairly quiet overnight, but notice again right here through the Rocky Mountain front 
from Great Falls to the north. The winds start to increase a bit around the Livingston area, pushing out towards Billings tonight, heading into tomorrow. We'll see at least some increase in the winds. That's going to support the warm up as we start getting into tomorrow afternoon. But check out Friday's afternoon highs, mainly into the 50s. Maybe we'll bump a low 60 here or there. Missoula will be watching you a few locations into the eastern plains as well especially areas where we haven't had uh, uh, much snowfall, but we have had some pretty cold temperatures in northeastern Montana. The National Weather Service office in Glasgow reports that Sydney, Wolf Point and Glasgow are off to their coldest April start since they started records quite a long while ago. Here's how it looks for us as we look across the region. Temperatures will be into the 40s to around 50 today, but a nice hike for you. Kalispell, Missoula heading into tomorrow, then a decent chance of showers as that next wave moves through from Canada on Saturday. Great Falls and Helena also looking at a bump in the temperatures pretty substantial 15 to 20 degrees tomorrow afternoon, but the showers back us down again as we get into the early part of the weekend. Butte and Bozeman also looking at a few of scattered isolated showers by Saturday after a warm up from today. Glendive remains fairly quiet. Billings may pick up a stray shower. Back to you, Janelle. All right, thanks so much, Ed. Well, aside from physical health issues, taking a toll around the world, mental health is also an issue. Some people might suffer from anxiety or depression and not even recognize it. Some of those signs are worrying about getting infected, worrying about financial security, or if you're feeling a loss of control. Now, you might be battling depression if you feel isolated and you're missing social interactions with friends, family, and coworkers. Now, this can be triggered by job loss, financial loss, or seeing the economy's impact on your retirement savings. Dr. Erica with St. Vincent Healthcare and Billings talked with MTN's Victoria Hill and offered this advice this morning. I think a lot of people are spending way too much time on their devices, reading so much that it's just dominating their mind. So give yourself a break, set some limits, you know, and get your, um, your, your information from good sources and then reach out to your medical provider. I really wanna hammer that home today that we are there for you. You're not gone during this time for your mental health issues or any of your other medical issues. Up next on your latest Ag News with Lane Nordland. Don't go away. Now, here's your farm and ranch report from the Montana Ag Network. Welcome back for today's farm and ranch news. As beef and pork processing facilities continue to suspend or cut back on protein production, many producers and consumers across the nation are concerned about the impact this will have on the nation's food supply. This week, Secretary of Agriculture Sonny Perdue assured the nation that the food supply is safe and abundant and that USDA is working to make sure beef and pork will be processed. In that vein, there's been a lot happening this week. It's COVID-19 is impacting food processing facilities, as you know. For Americans who be, may be worried about access to good food because of this, I want to assure you the American food supply is strong, resilient, and safe. And in fact, our food supply chain has shown tremendous agility in shifting production and logistics so suddenly from restaurant and institutional settings to retail settings. To all the employers out there in this sector, it's critical that you follow CDC guidelines and guidance and best practices to keep all of your employees and people safe and healthy. To employees and local public health officials advising them, the CDC has issued guidelines on how to mitigate a situation if you have a positive case in one of your facilities. We need our local health authorities and our state health authorities to do everything they can to balance the demand of keeping our facilities operational and our critical industries going, while at the same time keeping the health and safety of employees as a top priority, as well as our communities. Secretary of Agriculture Purdue stressed that there is no shortage of food in the United States. In the United States, we have plenty of food for all of our citizens. I want to be clear, the bare store shelves that you may see in some cities in the country are a demand issue, not a supply issue. And it's taken us a few days to relocate the misalignment between institutional settings and grocery settings. But that does not mean that we don't have enough food in this country to feed the American people. Now, Purdue also said that he wants to purchase dairy meat and other foods from producers and distribute them to food banks and even into international humanitarian aid programs. 
As for the billions of dollars in the CARES Act relief funding for agriculture, sources say USDA may roll out details of the plan Friday. The relief is expected to include $9.5 billion for livestock producers. We'll be right back. Returning back today, we all know that it takes a labor force to make sure food makes it to consumers. This week, U.S. Senators John Tester and Steve Daines are applauding a decision by USDA and the Department of Homeland Security to amend certain H-2A Ag Guest Worker Visa requirements to support Montana agriculture employers and protect American food security during the coronavirus pandemic. Under this temporary rule, certain H-2A employers will be able to hire workers who are already certified under the H-2A program. This rule allows the Citizenship and Immigration Services to allow certified H-2A workers to stay in the country beyond the three-year maximum currently in place. These provisions will be put in place to mitigate the impact of travel restrictions on seasonal workers who are unable to come to the U.S. and work for ag producers. Agriculture groups say the flexibility is critical for farmers and ranchers who are battling unprecedented uncertainty from COVID-19 and need a steady supply of labor to keep the U.S. food supply chain stable. Well, friends, that's all for today's Farm and Ranch News. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks, Lauren. Lane, sorry. Celebra celebrities are coming together to raise money to fight hunger during the coronavirus pandemic. It's called the All In Challenge. Each person who accepts the challenge must then challenge someone else to take part and create a fan experience that will be auctioned off. I just wanted to say that I am going to join the All In Challenge. I fly to the winner's home and I sing them One Less Lonely Girl. I'm creating the next big movie star. You're gonna be the next Denzel or the next Kerry Washington. Someone who donates at least $25 will get the chance to be my co-host for a show. Now the auction proceeds are being donated to various food banks, including Feeding America, Meals on Wheels, and No Kid Hungry. Only a day after the project's launch, $4 million had been raised and counting. Well, having a birthday during the COVID-19 pandemic isn't exactly fun for young kids and teens, but one Helena mom wasn't going to let social distancing get in the way of throwing her daughter the best 15th birthday possible. Amanda Wheeler found Deborah Remillard giving horse rides on Facebook, so she decided to contact Deborah for her daughter Serenity's birthday. Now, Deborah owns a farm outside of East Helena with many animals and felt this was a special way she could give back to those in the community during these difficult times. Waited there for a minute and then the horse showed up and then she gave me this note and it told me like it was like I guess what would you say a clue, a clue to like find one of my gifts and so I went on the horse ride and then I found the gift and I got a harp. But he's just having a little bit of tough time and these these kids at this age and they really can't be with their friends and there's so much that they're already missing that to just give a little bit is a, it is a great, it's a great privilege, actually. Really fun. It makes my day as well. After Serenity's horse ride, her friends and family drove by her house for a surprise birthday parade. She says despite the COVID-19 pandemic, this was one of the best birthdays she's ever had. That's a great story. It really is. Leave it up to a parent to make the best out of a bad situation. Exactly. Yeah, nothing like the motivation of a parent. Let's take a look and see what's going on. Temperatures over the next few days starting to warm up today. 30s, 40s, maybe near 50 in portions of western Montana. But you can see the increase of the readings by Saturday. We start to see these areas of showers move back into the picture again. But that's a pretty fast moving cold front, mainly rain showers instead of some of the snow that portions of the region saw today. Once we get past Saturday, Saturday, we could really see a pump in the temperatures on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, readings into the 50s, 60s, and by midweek, we'll likely see some 70 degree readings. All right, thanks, Ed. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you right back here tomorrow at noon.